Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Check Me. Let's cover Tyler Buckner and his first start against University of Southern Florida, South Florida. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, we have Tyler coming in, starting. Jalen Milrow was out for Alabama. Well, we'll see if, if he's out. But uh, I do expect Tyler to, to pretty much play the whole game. I've been breaking down film on him for the past uh, past two years. Uh, last year, I broke down some films and film and kind of talked about some things that uh, I thought he uh, did well. Uh, for example, you know, against Ohio State last year, um, Ohio State is the standard outside of the outside of the SEC. I don't think Ohio State is the standard if you include the SEC because uh, I think they'd be a maybe a, a top four team, you know, in the SEC. Uh, playing against some of the better teams, I don't think that they are, you know, uh, uh, a top four team. They just win their division, which is a weak division. So, but going to talk about Tyler. Um, one thing I did like about Tyler in the Ohio State game, you know, he throws to the open guy. That's a big thing. He gets the ball out very quick. He makes quick decisions. Understands how the defense moves. Uh, a lot of times they on these RPO that Tommy Reese actually set up uh, when he was playing for Notre Dame. They got him on a move. He understands how the defense shifts. He understands how they react to certain things. I thought that went well. Uh, he goes through his progressions, um, and he stands in the pocket, you know, stands tall in the pocket. He's a sneaky runner. Um, his pass opens up his run, and his run opens up his pass. Um, he runs vertical. And that's big. If you never noticed, when Jalen Miro was getting outside the pocket, he would kind of take these wide angles to run by people with his speed. Buckner is a downhill runner. Almost, I'm not going to say he's Lamar Jackson, but when he takes off, he takes off, and he's very decisive with it. Uh, he checks fronts. Uh, that's one thing uh, and I did notice in the game versus Ohio State. He did check the front a couple of, time, couple of times. Uh, if you know, He checked to runs. Uh, I thought that was good, just have him having the, the, the ability or them giving them him the free range or just free roam to actually do that. I thought that was well. Now, they did, Ohio State did confuse him on stunts, and this is something that consistently I saw – Throughout the game, they ran one stunt where uh, the right outside backer, uh, the the uh, the the lefty tackle was pushing down, almost like a one technique to uh, two technique over the center, and then the outside backer on the right hand side will come loop in. They ran that twice. The first time they ran, they got to him. The second time they did it, he threw the ball in the dirt. So um, stunts could confuse him, particularly if he feels like he has a good front. Uh, Lots of RPO, um, you know, he makes his, makes good decisions, and he, he but he has to learn how to take a hit. And this is kind of the reason why he was out. I'll talk about it, uh, why he didn't play the full season with uh, Notre Dame. Against South Carolina, um, it, he lets his guys run under the ball. You know, he, you know having a quarterback that, you, that, that can throw you open um, is, is huge, especially with the talent that Alabama receivers do have. If you ever noticed, Jalen Miro, his throws were just kind of like tight on the spot. Um, they're very flat. Uh, Buckner doesn't have a strong arm, but he lets his guys run under the ball. I think that's huge. Um, every now and then he'll make an ill-advised play, and that's one thing. It's like he'll he'll give you 20, uh, 10, 10, 15 good plays, and then he'll give you one play that's detrimental. Or it's like, hey, don't ever do that again. So um, he does force the ball in tight coverage sometimes. Um, he's kind of programmed if, if one thing, if it's the way it's supposed to be, you know, he'll throw it uh, because it's the way it's supposed to be, and then – uh, sometimes he miss re misses reads, um, and then uh, he he asked the guys he he he's got to see the whole defense. And sometimes at the goal line, I, I saw that as well. Against Marshall, this is the game he actually got injured and they lost. They were in South Bend as well too. So I'm sorry, in uh, uh, at Notre Dame. Uh, but Marshall, he's got to, He's gonna have to find uh, gonna have to find the open guy. That's one thing he has to work on. He's he's. I mean, I'm sorry, I lied. He's going to find the open guy. Uh, if the guy's open, um, you're talking about a guy who can throw the ball in the middle of the field, um, you know, find his tight ends, his running backs out, out in the flat, um, you know, his, uh, his, 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 his wide outs, you know, running, running in routes. He's going to find the open guy. Um, once again, the stunts did get him. Um, but uh, like I said, his legs are, are, are detrimental. They, you got to respect his legs and you got to respect the pass. And that's one thing you get with Tyler. Um, he commits to the run, uh, short memory, and and sometimes he'll force his throw, force throws that he doesn't necessarily have the arm strength for. Um, but uh, overall, uh, how do you beat him? Um, you know, you with stunts, uh, you know, stunts, um, you know, confusing the fronts that you show him, uh, make him think, you know, kind of get him off his program because he he does really well with the program. Now, understand, he played a full season with Tommy Reese. This is the old coordinator. Love RPO action. Uh, a lot of design runs, um, a lot of zone running. 
a lot of downhill running, trap, power. You're going to get all of that, especially with the with Alabama running back core. I think when they brought on Tyler, they knew he was probably the best option. And when you say learn the offense, does he really have to learn the offense that he was running, specifically, well, really actually at Notre Dame? Um, so we're seeing probably seeing Tyler earlier than we thought we were, mainly because this is the same offense he was under for all last year. Uh, and then not, not only mentioned in the in the uh, the bowl game against South Carolina, you know they won the bowl game. Um, you know he he did make some ill-advised throws, but I mean a lot of the RPO, a lot of uh, a lot of slants. Um, you'll see guys open down the, uh, down the field. One thing that one thing that Todd does very very well is he really sets up and knows how to throw the ball to his guys on the inside, to his big guys, his tight ends. You know uh, who are sweeping up the middle of the field. I always assess how well. A quarterback can can make throws basically in between the numbers and in between the hashes. And this guy really understands how defense moves. You know, if I wanted him to throw a curl uh, and, and cover cover six, cover nine, this is a guy who can do that. Makes very smart decisions, very smart plays. When the biggest drawback, like I said, is you know he doesn't have necessarily the best arm strength, but he can he can he can he can his quickness uh, mitigates a lot of that. Getting the ball out quick. When you talk about tiring your defense out, this is something a guy can do. Um, uh, I think that also he has to be good all the time, not just be great. You know, every now and then he has to be good all the time. And when he's not great, he's got to be good. Uh, so those ill-advised plays, he has to learn how to mitigate that and also protect himself. One of the reasons why he was out um, most of last year was because of his shoulder, and he, and you know because of his shoulder, uh, he was ready to come back at a certain point during the bowl game. But the guy that was in Tommy Pine, whatever his name is, was 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 just balling but he's got in this game I would expect in this game I expect him to protect himself a little bit more and the reason we're seeing him is because the year over year progression of Jalen Mirrow was not there Jalen Mirrow was just not he didn't progress he had three years to work on the work uh, to to progress to, to get better and he didn't and he didn't look good he didn't look exceptionally good in any of the any, any of the, these, these past three years now stay tight because if Tyler doesn't understand Buck doesn't understand Hey, look! You need to slide, and when you need to slide, then we can see him again. But um, Tyler, I expected a lot of RPO action, um, a lot of a lot of quarterback run. Um, you know, we're going to see the ball get thrown down the field in the middle of the field. We're going to see passes that we haven't seen before because the game was just too fast for for Jalen Miro. Tyler Buckner, the game, he's up to speed. Um, I think that we're going to see uh, really the maturation of Tyler Buckner as a true quarterback rather than simply a dual threat quarterback, but a true quarterback because he does possess the skill. So I think Tyler's going to come in there. Um, he's going to be efficient, uh, do, what he need, do what he needs to do on the ground, and we're going to start. Alabama's going to start to develop their identity. So um, we'll see what happens, but I'm excited to see Tyler come, go in there. And, and, and I thought it was a, uh, they got him with the anticipation of, hey, it's Tommy's guy. He came from Notre Dame. If they need somebody to come up real quick, here it is. And there's a reason why he took over Ty Simpson uh, for the second quarterback spot.